This video is the start of rational functions and we'll look at the reciprocal limits and asymptotes. So the reciprocal of a number is 1 divided by that number. So the reciprocal of 4 is 1 quarter, 2 thirds would be 3 on 2, 4 and a half, write that as a single fraction is 9 on 2, so its reciprocal would be 2 on 9. The domain of a reciprocal function, of the 1 on x, where x is an element of any real number except 0. Because we can't divide by 0, therefore x cannot be 0. The range of a reciprocal function is also where y is an element of r except 0. Because we can't divide 1 by a number to get 0 as the, as the answer. Limits and asymptotes. So a limit is the value y which a function f of x is trending towards, so approaching, but it does not reach. So as x tends towards a certain value. So what we mean by limits is and this links to asymptotes because it's, in this situation, as x is approaching a certain value, which is this, what this means here, so the limit as x is approaching plus or negative infinity, so as our value of x here is getting closer and closer towards infinity, so it's going, the graphic carries on going this way or this way to positive or negative infinity, what value is that graph getting closer and closer to on the y-axis? So if you thought, if you actually like, did it on a graphing software and kept on zooming out, you would see that that graph would never ever touch the x, the x axis. It carries on going and gets very, very close, but never touches it. And that's because in this equation of y equals 1 on x, we can't have 0 as a solution because we can't divide 1 by number and get 0. So we can get very, very close to 0, but we'll never ever get to 0. And that's what is happening here in those lines where it approaches but never reaches on a graph are called asymptotes. Now, this also happens vertically. So with these two here, so we've got the lim two limits here in the second ones that I've underlined in red. So as x get approaches zero from the positive side and as x approaches zero from the negative side. So when the graph is going this way and it's getting cl closer and closer to zero in either direction, what you will notice about the top and the bottom here is that those two lines carry on going, once again approach the y-axis but never ever touch it or cross it. And that's because x in the function of y equals 1 and x, x cannot be 0. When sketching the graph with a limit, we represent the limit by drawing a horizontal or vertical dashed line asymptote. I'll show that on an example in a second. Many reciprocal functions have the same shape and is useful to, useful to label one point on the branch of the curve. So here I've got the graph of y equals 12 on x. So I've labelled some points because that helps us know what type of function it is. Now the asymptotes of these, the horizontal will once again be zero. So if this was not obviously on the x, we would draw a dashed line where the asymptote is. And you see here I've drawn a dashed one on and there is also an asymptote on the y-axis that that line is approaching. So we can draw that with a dashed line to represent that. Now we're going to look at transforming the reciprocal. So a reciprocal function of the form y equals k over ax plus d plus c will have a vertical asymptote at x equals ne negative d on a. And that's basically when the denominator equals 0. So you're just working out when the denominator equals 0 and it will have an horizontal asymptote at y equals c. Now when you're writing solutions and you're writing the asymptote in a solution, you have to write x equals or y equals. You can't just give a value as the answer, you have to write x equals for the vertical, y equals for a horizontal. Got an example here. Sketch the function y equals 1 on x minus 2, show any asymptotes as dotted lines. So I've already put that in. I would just recommend graphing it on your calculator and then drawing a sketch from there. You see here, I've got that green dotted line down the middle. That's where the vertical asymptote is. Those lines here vertically will never ever reach that line. There is also one on the x-axis, but obviously as it's the x-axis, that's why you can't see a dotted line there. Part B, we want to write down the equations of the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So the vertical asymptote is the green dotted line, which is when x equals 2. So that's what the that graph is getting closer and closer towards, but never reaches. So that's the vertical asymptote, and the horizontal asymptote will be when y equals, and that will be 0 because these points here 
that have just circled in red are getting closer and closer to when y equals zero but never reaches it. And then part C, state the domain and range. So with these types of functions, if you look at what possible values of x you could have for the domain, you can have anything except two. Two is the only option that we can't have because if you look at the function we've been given of y equals one on x minus two, if x was two, we'd get one on zero and that we can't solve that. So the domain is x is an element of R and cannot equal two. And then for the range, what possible y values can we have? So y once again can be any value because it's carrying on going upwards and downwards forever and ever. But the only y value it cannot be is zero because it never touches that x axis. Now a rational function is a function where we have a function on the numerator and a function on the denominator. And those functions are polynomials. We, will, we are going to look at linear functions, so like the one in blue here, where the function equals ax plus b over cx plus d. And for this type of rational function, the vertical asymptote is at negative d on c, but once again, you could also do make the denominator equal zero to work that one out. The horizontal asymptote is a divided by c. So you look at the values with the x's, and you divide the numbers in front of the x's. Example here for the function 4x plus 1 over 2x minus 6, find the equations of the asymptotes. So for our vertical, the easiest way I find to do this is make the denominator equal 0. So 2x minus 6 equals 0, rearrange that, 2x equals 6, so when x equals 3. There's our vertical asymptote. And remember, we have to write it as x equals. For the horizontal, we look at the values in front of the x's, which is 4 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator. So our horizontal asymptote will be when 4 over 2. So y equals 2. You can sketch the function, which I've already done here. And you see there I've got the two lots of dotted lines, horizontal and vertically, at 3 and when x equals 3 and y equals 2 for the asymptotes. And the domain and range, nice and easy. The domain can once again be any x value except 3. And the range can be any y value except 2, and because that's where our asymptotes are. Solving rational equations uses knowledge from generally a grade 10 topic called algebraic fractions. And we just solve these as we would one of those types of problems. This example here, first step will be to make all the denominators equal. So for here, we'd want our denominator to be 2x multiplied by x plus 1. The first fraction needs to be multiplied by the x plus 1 on the numerator and the denominator. Second fraction needs to be multiplied by 2x. And we have to do the same to the negative 2 on this time as well. So this one would have to be multiplied by 2x and x plus 1. Once all the denominators are the same, we can get rid of the denominator. So we'll be left with 3x plus 1 minus 2x times 2x, which will equal negative 2 times by 2x, x plus 1, and then we just solve from there. So we get 3x plus 3 minus 4x squared equals negative 4x squared minus 4x. Rearrange and we'll end up with 7x equals negative 3, so x equals negative 3 on 7. We can also do the inverse of a rational function, exactly the same as we would do the inverse with any type of function. So first of all, write it y equals, then switch to the x's and y's, and then solve from there. Expand your brackets. Put all the y's on one side, all the x's on the other. Factor out the y. 
and then divide. So we end up with our inverse as 2x minus 4 on 3x minus 1. And then write that with the correct notation. And that is rational functions.